ለመማር ወደ ትምርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የተጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምርታችሁ መከታተል ትችላላችሁ ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢንስቲትዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በስድስት ወር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራችሁ ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁት አይነት በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ ከናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ እንደናችሁ ሰላም ነው እዚህ ጌሪ እሺ ባለፉ ጊዜ እየያየን የነበረው ሴንሴሽን ኤንድ ፐርሰፕሽን ኤንድ ቢሊንግ ቻፕተር ነበር የሚለው እና መጀመሪያ ላይ ኔቸር ኦፍ ሴንሴሽን አይተና ሴንሴሽን ምንድን ነው የሚለው ራሱ አይተና ኔቸር ኦፍ ሴንሴሽን አሁን ደግሞ ለናይንትን ያለው ምንድን ነው ወደ ፐርሰፕሽን እየሄድ ነው ማለት ነው እና ሴንስ ሲናተርክ የሚያሉት ነገሮች በዚህ በግራፊካል መልኩ በስዕል መልኩ አይተና ማን ነው ኮሃ ነው ጻልጅ ሚያለቅሳለ ኦኬ ኦኬ አሰይ ነው ምንድነው ፐርሰፕሽን ነው ለማስተዋል ሲሃል ምን አለ አሁን በከተታ ምን ሄደ ወደ ፐርሰፕሽን ነው ፐርሰፕሽን ዌር ባይ ዘ ብሬን ኢንተርፕሬትስ ሴንሴሽን ኤንድ ጊቭ ዘ ሚኒንግ ለምሳሌ አንድ ሰው የተለያየ ነገር ሴንስ ሊያርግ ይችላል ያ ነገር በስዕሉ ላይ ባየ ነው መሰረት ወደ ብሬናችን ይሄዳል ወደ ብሬናችን ከሄደ በኋላ ኢንተርፕሬት ይደረጋል ማለት ነው ከሴንስ ኦርጋኖቻችን ማለት ነው ይሄ ሚኒንግ የምንሰጥበት ንግግር ሊሆን ይችላል የምንነካው ሊሆን ይችላል የምንናየው ሊሆን ይችላል የተለያየ ነገር ከኢንቫይሮንታችን እና ከውስጣችን ያሉት ነገሮች ወደ ብሬናችን ሄደው ሚኒንግ የሚሰጥበት አካይድ ምን ይባላል ፐርሰፕሽን ይባላል ማለት ፐርሰፕሽን ማለት ትሩ የሚሰጠው ማለት ነው ኦኬ ፐርሲፕ ስናረግ ፐርሲፕ ብናረጋቸው ነገሮች ካውለት ሊገኙ ይችላሉ አንደኛው ኬት ሊሆን ይችላል from the environment ይገኝ ይችላል ከኢንቫይሮንታችን ልናገኘው እንችላለን ሁለተኛው ደግሞ from our inner body ልናገኘው እንችላለን ከውስጣችን ማለት ነው ከውስጣችን ወይንም ከኢንቫይሮንታችን ልናገኘው እንችላለን ፐርሲቭ እናደርገው ነገር እስቲ ባለፈው ተዋይት እንደበር ኦኬ ዘን አል ሚክስ አፕ ኤንድ አል ትራይ ቱ ኤክስፕሌይን एवरीथिंग ኦኬ ላስት ታይም ዊ ሃቭ ዲስከስድ አባውት ሴንሴሽን and now we are going to discuss about perception when we talk about perception when we sense our sense organs just detect something and send it to our brain for an interpretation only so uh, the process of interpretation is called perception if someone is going to perceive something that means he is going to give it a meaning a meaning for that for that thing so Uh, those things we are going to perceive are from our environment and from our inner body how can okay let me ask you a question here how can we perceive from our inner body can anyone explain it to me okay when we perceive we perceive things from our environment and our inner body what do we mean min malatachin no and neger perceive sinadark ka inner body achin liyon ichilal when the book from it can be from our environment how do you think we perceive from our inner body can you give me an example okay omar i can see your hand your uh, uh, screen shows me that you have something to ask okay anyone anyone tadu tadu yes sir camera shall not be seen and the other will when we perceive something we perceive something from the environment or from our inner body 
See, from our inner body. How can we perceive something from our inner body? Can you give me an example of things or senses that we can perceive from our inner body? Sorry, sorry, I'm not out class. I'm not out class. No, that's not out class. Okay, okay, you come and she, she, she. Okay, anyone? In Kwamlak? Yeah. Is she? In Kwamlak? In Kwamlak? Dagmawi? I'll give value to the participants. Maragala, but she's in Blue and Tamala Tela. Dagmawi, when we perceive something, how did you think I'm going to learn you some man? Are you listening? Are you following us? Okay, yeah. can you give us an example? Let know from our inner body. Perceive another. Let know. Can you give me an example? The sense organ of touch. Perceive another. Remember, our sense organs, sense organ of touch. Tell me, lad. Sense organ of touch. Sense of organ. Then our brain interprets these sensations. So when we perceive things, when we perceive things, uh, we perceive things from the environment, from the inner body. And give me a sensation, a kind of sense, a perception that we can perceive from the environment. Can you give me an example? Is that not? Ms. Uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, what do you think, Ms. Uh, Environmental media, I can actually convince you. In our body, the more and more, I'm saying, I'm still with me. I'm watching you. My lips are still smiling. I'm still alive. Very good, very good. When we see, when we say from our environment, it means that what we see, what we hear, whatever, everything, and what we sense with our hands or everything, will be uh, will go straight to our brain. So uh, when we talk about our inner body, it means when someone is sick, when we feel something, sickness, happiness, or whatever, feelings from our, feelings from our inner body, that means when we are sick, when we are happy, and whatever, whatever. All these are from our body. That means when we conclude it, when we conclude it, okay, okay. That means we perceive things from the environment and from our body. Okay, uh, when we conclude this, it, it means sensory inputs just uh, transmit raw material, raw information. They don't interpret, they don't do any translation, whatever. For instance, we can hear a sound, our ears just transmit that sound to our brain. It won't uh, interpret it. So, sensation just transmits raw material. Uh, sens sensation is simply determined by stimulus patterns. Rather, it is an active searching for the best interpretation. When we talk about perception, it's not just transmitting information. For instance, somebody may say something to us. Someone may talk something to us. And so, I'm like a little niche. But uh, when we talk about perception, it's not just uh, I mean hearing the sound. We give uh, interpretation, meaning, the best interpretation, the best interpretation for what we hear, for what we see, for what for everything. So this is called perception. In case of perception, we don't transmit the raw material as it is. We give it the best interpretation. That means. Uh, if someone gives best interpretation, it means uh, it's perception. Okay, when we go to the next slide, perception takes into account experience stored in the memory, context, and internal state. Uh, when we perceive things, we consider these three things experience. And then the perceives another, and the we consider this. For instance, when we talk about experience, for instance, when we face something, when we hear something, whatever, if we have a formal knowledge, it can be good or bad. 
understanding about that thing. So uh, that will help us in the process of perception. That means we have some uh, basic knowledge about it so that we can, t uh, we can understand the new message. So in case of perception, uh, experience matters. The other thing is context. Let me give you one example in case of context. You have a best friend, and when you are with your best friend, when you are enjoying, he may call you with your nickname. He may give you a nickname. So while you are having coffee, tea, or beer, or whatever, when you are enjoying, he, he will call you with that nickname. But the context is just, just to show his love, to, to show his nearness to you, or to show his closeness to you. However, when we see it on the other way around, let's say with your friend, you are in a meeting doing something important. So if he calls you with that name, you may be mad because uh, you'll turn out to be mad because the context is not right. So when we perceive things, we consider the context. Good to know? Is it clear? For the others, which is in the Kalan, the letter of the Chan, Lam Sale, and the matter of Antama Roman will be clear of each other. Your context to Chautana, what they need in Slam Yasemat. However, Lam Sale, the Hon Sarai Tama Duachu, the Dixalis and Chus of Savale, matter of Abil and the soap, but I'm not an adult Chilamach. Because context to Tickle Slam, a Gavau, yet a Kamabuta, Tickle Slam. The other thing is internal state. Our internal state matters in perception. How? Let me give you one example. For instance, when you are happy, when you are happy, uh, the way you see things, the way you see things or you perceive things, is uh, you'll be in a good mood. However, you may be mad at home or you may lose, you lost something or whatever, so that when you see something, you may be mad because you come out mad from your house. You were not happy at home. So, internal state, emotions, our emotions, it matters, it really matters. Our emotions really matters. If we are happy, we may be patient, we may consider, we may be, I mean, we'll be patient if we are happy. But if we were mad at home before living, and when we face something, we'll be aggressive. So our emotion, internal state matters in perception. Not perception and as it's to never watch, impact on nature. These three things have their impacts uh, in case of perception. The other thing, uh, when we see uh, perception, perception in general consists of three basic processes. The first process is selection, the second one, organization, and the third one is interpretation. When we perceive, we follow these three steps. First, we select, then we organize what we select, then we interpret, we give meanings. Okay, let's see what's uh, the uh, three of them. Selection. When we talk about selection, selection is the first process. First process. For instance, when you are walking on the street, you will hear many sounds many sounds, different, different sounds, and what you'll see different things. However, you will not perceive everything. You won't perceive everything. But you select, you select from those sounds. Because our senses are bombarded with different things. Our eyes see different things. We see different things in our surrounding. We hear different sounds, however, from those sounds, we select. We select uh, what we want to select. So that we perceive only few. Only few. Then show you the channel, you know, you mean someone, you mean now, who do an ask about what those touch you matter. Because we know we cannot process all the information. Who put the information, we cannot process it. We are bombarded with lots of information, lots of sounds, lots of uh, things that we're going to see so that we cannot process everything, everything. 
So in Nagaland, what we do is we're going to filter out and to block out what we don't want. We'll block out what we don't want. So this process is called selective attention. Selectively, we give attention. Selective attention. This is called selective attention. Do you have any question? Any hands? Okay, let me proceed. Okay. Uh, we call it selective attention. So, uh, in this case, uh, we attend to the stimuli that we select. So, in case of uh, selection, there are three groups of factors that influence the process of selective attention. The first one is environmental factors. And then they select and another. To select something, there are factors. The first one is environmental factors. The second one is psychological factors. The third one is physiological factors. Okay, environment list environmental factors. Environment environmental factors. Size and intensity. The first thing, environmental factors, linear attention, perception, size and intensity. Size and intensity, size and intensity uh, helps us to select. For instance, let's see, when you were walking on the street, you'll see a big advertisement besides the street. So that when you see that, you'll turn around and see, read what's, what's on it. However, on a pole, on an electric pole, for instance, there are small advertisements, but we don't see them usually because they are too small, their size is too small, so that bigger and brighter objects attract our attention. If the advertisement is in a big notice board, it will attract our attention. That's why big notice boards, big notice boards pay lots of many amount, I mean a good amount of money for the government because size will attract people's uh, attention. The other thing is repetition, repetition, repeatedly or frequently. For instance, if, we, if you see the Ethiopian television, some advertisements will come and go uh, within 10 or 20 or 30 minutes interval. They are repeating it because they want to get people attention. They want to get our, our attention. That's why they are repeating it now and then, now and then, and now and then every day. So repetition uh, gets, um, I mean, helps us to, uh, repetition help to get our attention. So the other thing is novelty. Novelty is sudden or unexpected stimuli also uh, helps to get our attention. For instance, let me give you one example. You remember there, is a, there was a big uh, mob for uh, our president Abu Ahmed at the Moscow Square. So at that moment, uh, there was an explosion. Look, at that day, everyone, when, we, when someone talks about that day, everyone remembers that there was a bomb explosion that day. So novelty, sudden or unexpected uh, events have the capacity to attract our attention. The other thing is movement. Moving, uh, movement, okay, moving objects also uh, have the capacity to uh, get our attention. Moving objects. Let's say in our town, Addis Ababa, if you travel around Addis Ababa, there are some big notice boards with a television screen. They, they do that because the reason is they will, uh, it's, uh, it's a good way to get people attention. If you have a TV screen and if people are there with different movements, that movement attracts uh, attention. The other thing is contrast. Contrast. Contrast, when we talk about contrast, what differs from the surrounding? Uh, get people attention easily. Will attract our attention easily. These are environmental factors. So now we're looking at, here, let me go back. 
uh, uh, these are the things that help us, that attract our uh, attention. First, environmental factors, psychological factors, physiological factors. Now, uh, we've seen the environmental factors, so environmental factors, now the psychological factors. Psychological factors. For instance, the first one, when we see psychological means something internal, motivation, need for something. Uh, for instance, if someone is hungry, mm -hmm. if someone is hungry, he will be looking for a food. He don't care about other things. So our internal state will attract us. There is a proverb. There is a proverb in Amharic. This means chicken, the dream of a chicken is always, I mean, looking for its food, nothing else. So our motivation will attract our attention all the time. Our internal feeling, our internal need will force us, will push us to something else. The other thing is emotions, the state we're in. I'm sorry, when we are enjoying, for, for example, if we are in a good emotion, we want to listen to a radio, to a tech, to a TV, watch movie, dance, and whatever. However, if we are in another emotion, we won't be interested in that things. So our emotion uh, has a big factor. Personality and interest. Our personality. What kind of interest do we have? For instance, say, someone can be a football player. What attracts his attention is always he thinks about football. He wants to listen about Lionel Messi, Ronaldo, and whatever. For instance, a guy like me, I like cycling. I'm interested to hear about Tour de France, Giro Italia, Volta Spagna, just like that. If I tell you about Volta Spagna, you won't be interested because it's not your interest to listen about cycling. So that personality matters. The other thing is psychological factors, physiological factors, sorry. Physiological factors also matter. For instance, uh, presence of specialized cells. Let me take a hyena. Let me take a hyena, for instance. Hyenas have specialized cells that can see in the dark time. Let me take a German Shepherd or a dogs. They have a special uh, capacity to smell things. So our physiological factors also matters in our attention. Okay, then comes, uh, uh, now we have seen uh, factors that matter for uh, selection. Then we go to organization. Let's see fire organization. And the second process of perception is organization. So let's talk about organization. Okay. Uh, when we perceive something, after interpreting, we will organize it. We will organize it. Once we have completed our selection of incoming information, we must organize that information into a pattern that will help us to understand the world easily. Organization refers to organizing stimuli into a meaning shape, meaningful shape or pattern. The process by which we structure the inputs or sensory uh, receptors is called perceptual organization. Uh, so uh, when we, uh, to give you some, I think it's clear by itself. So uh, organization means uh, we have experience, we have different experience. When we hear something, when we uh, sense, perceive something, uh, we don't put that information just as it is. We organize it. We organize it with our formal experience. Somebody may say something. Uh, we have some kind of experience, what that means, so that we'll organize it with that thing. We may see something, we'll organize it with what we know before, right? So uh, when we perceive the second process is, uh, after giving a meaning, we organize it. We, we organize it uh, with what we know before. 
Then when we do this organization, however, what we have to know, what we have to understand is we do it automatically and unconsciously. Automatically and unconsciously. When our brain performs this organization, we don't say this belongs to here, this belongs to there, and whatever. We do it automatically and unconsciously, without thinking. Our brain do it without unconsciously. For instance, when we talk about unconscious, let's say, when we are uh, after eating a food, we don't consciously digest it. We don't order our stomach to digest it or to whatever, to fasten it or whatever. It's just doing it unconsciously by itself. So just like that, our brain uh, interprets these things unconsciously, unconsciously and automatically, immediately, that means. Okay. Okay, uh, when we organize it, there is uh, a principle. There is a principle which we follow unconsciously. Unconsciously follow another goal, there is principle. The first principle is figure ground. As you can understand from this, the, the literal meaning, figure is uh, some kind of photograph, and ground is background. For instance, you can see my, my you can see me on the screen. I'm a figure. The background is uh, okay. The background, okay. That means your your conscious, your concern is with me, not with my background. You don't worry about the background here. You worry about what I'm saying because I'm the figure. When we perceive things, we perceive them figure ground. Let me give you another example. For for instance, you are studying. However there is a tap beside you and you are listening to a classical music and you are reading your uh, book or an exercise book or whatever, you are doing something. You, you open the radio behind you. Which one do you think is a figure and which one do you think is a background? Can anyone please tell me? And Radio Kaftachal. Radio Kaftachu, Yana Bavachu, you know, figure, devtarachu, figure mallet, and do never not cross a touch with Tayot Mallet. To cross a touch with that, devtarachu. Ground the book, call a radio. Look, when you are studying, opening your exercise book, the figure is your exercise book. However, you open the radio behind you, the background is a radio. So we cannot perceive, we cannot read and hear the radio at the same time. So that our perception separates it. When we organize, while organizing, it will make the, our exercise book a figure and the radio a background. However, things will not remain forever as figure and uh, background. In the other way, Sometimes uh, it will be, uh, I mean, it can be exchanged, it can exchange. For instance, the exercise book is your figure and the radio is a background. But you listen to something uh, special on the radio, breaking news, it says. There is a breaking news, a breaking news. So that you will close your exercise book and you will turn out to the radio and you say, what the hell is going on? You will increase the sound. Do you get me? Now the figure ground is changed. Your figure is the radio and the background is your exercise book. But when we organize, the one principle is figure ground. Is it clear? Okay, figure ground. The other thing when we perceive, when we organize, proximity or nearness. Proximity or nearness. We perceive closer uh, things, closer or near things, as if they are the same. For instance, take you. You are one batch, the same batch students. When we perceive you, we perceive you this year, first year freshman students. We perceive you as if you are the same. Because you are uh, the same batch, whatever. 
we perceive you the same, however, individually or different. But when we perceive freshman students, we perceive you as a pre freshman students for National Aviation Academy. The next one, the principle of organization is similarity. Objects that are alike in some way, for example, in color, shape, size, tend to be perceived as belonging together. If we have red, brown, orange objects, we perceive the red ones as if they are the same. We perceive the yellow ones as if they are the same. We group them. So one, one way of organizing or grouping is similarity, by using similarity. Number four is closure. Closure is filling in the gap. When we perceive, we fill in the gap. We fill in the gap. For instance, we have a very poor network, very poor network. When I ask Brooke, for, for example, when I ask Brooke to tell me something, because of the bad connection, uh, what he's saying is not fluent. It's not fluent. But however, when we listen to him, we fill the gaps. For instance, when, we say, when someone, someone called you, someone called you and he said, how, how are you? you? You may not listen to the last word, but our brain, our brain fills that gap. How, how are you? You perceive it as if he's saying, how are you? Salam, if you don't listen to the last word, our brain completes it. So when we organize, it's, this is called the principle of Uh, are we clear? Is everything clear? Dagmawi? Dagmawi? Yes, sir. Yes. Gilsenu? Ah, Gilsenu? Gilsenu? Ah, ah. Ah, yeah, that was cool. Okay, principle of closure. Okay, let's proceed. The other thing is when our brain organize, it's a principle of good continu continuation or continuity. Look at the figure. When you look at the figure, there is a, a yellow line that separates the black line. However, when we perceive it, we perceive the black line as if it's continuous. Good continuation, as if it's continuous. Symmetric rule is the same, somewhat similar with continuation and closure. Symmetric rule is also, uh, we see two unconnected uh, elements that are symmetrical, we unconsciously integrate them into one uh, line. We perceive it as if we fill the gap and uh, we perceive it as if it's similar. Number seven is simplicity. Simplicity, we observe and perceive pattern in the most basic, straightforward manner that we can. Simplicity, when we talk about simplicity, when we perceive something, we don't take it as it is. We don't take it as it is. Say, someone uh, will come and tell you something. And when you are alone, maybe, as like we do, especially Ethiopians, we ask ourselves, what was, what, what was he trying to say? Why did he say like that? Because we want to simplify what we perceive. When we perceive, we want to simplify as much, as much as possible. This may be for a long time. For instance, uh, when people get old and you ask them about their experience, they will still tell you, they will still try to simplify the things. You know what I understand from the, right now? They will tell you. Right now, that, that time he was saying like that, but he was, uh, what, uh, this day I can interpret it that he was trying to tell me this, that, this, that, that, whatever. So uh, when we perceive, we try to simplify it. Then, then uh, we'll go after organization. After organization, we'll interpret interpret generating meaning from sensory experiences is a task of perceptual interpretation. 
Perceptual interpretation lies at the interaction intersection of sensation and memory. So organizing it like this, after organizing it like this, then we interpret it. We generate meaning. Intersection. Uh, when we talk about interpretation, perceptual interpretation, then we interpret. When we interpret, we, it means that we are generating a meaning. We are generating meaning. And this interpretation, like perceptual interpretation, lies at the intersection of sensation and memory. As the brain interprets the current sensation in light of experience. After selection and organization, the brain uses this information to explain and make judgments about external world. Then, organize after organization, organizing the information, then we, inter we interpret it. We give it a meaning. In case of interpretation, there are factors that affect our inter interpretation. The first one is belief. The second one, emotion. And the third one is expectation. 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 So these things affect, these things affect our interpretation, our interpretation. For instance, I remember one doctor told me, one doctor told me that uh, once an NGO went to a remote area in the south, in the south of Ethiopia, and when they saw those people, they have a shortage of water, clean water. So they took their equipment from Addis Ababa and they dig a hole there for uh, pure, for clean water, for those tribes. And they dig that hole very deep and they got the water. However, those tribes, after the water uh, just uh, after flourish, those tribes didn't use that water for drinking. They still start to go to the river, uh, which is very far away from their uh, locality. So the NGO guys were really surprised and asked them, asked them, why don't you drink from this water? And they say, this is a burial ground for our ancestors. So we cannot drink this water. You see, their belief affects their interpretation. They saw the water, but they cannot drink it because they believe that this is the bone of their ancestors and whatever. So they refuse to drink it. So belief affects our interpretation. The other thing is emotion, our internal state. Are we happy? Are we mad? Or whatever. For instance, if we are in a stress, very busy, we may be emotional, so that we don't give uh, attention to things and we don't whatever uh, interpret things emotionally. So you know, our emotions affect our um, uh, interpretation. The last one is expectation. When we are walking on a street. We may see someone, like an example, we may see someone, but we, we pass them without saying hi or whatever. And they call our name and, didn't you see me? We say, oh, I didn't see you. Expectation. What we don't expect, we don't see. If you expect something, you'll see it. If you don't expect it, even uh, if you see it, you don't observe it. You just ask it. Okay. Okay. Now, after saying this, we'll go to depth and distance perception. So, if this is the case, how are we going to perceive depth and distance? Depth and distance. Ordinarily, we need to know not only what something is about, also it will what where it is. And the neighbors tonight, when we see something, we don't want to see it. Just like I mean, we we have to sometimes we guess 
how far, how far away is it from me? Is it closer to me or is it far away from me? When we see a wall, is it deep or whatever? So how are we going to guess? How are we going to guess the distance? Touch, touch gives us this information directly, but vision doesn't. Vision doesn't. For instance, if someone asks me, what is the distance from here to here? My background, what's the wall from here to here? I can measure it, I can touch it and measure it and I say three whatever, whatever. Three inches or five, four inches or five inches and whatever. Touch gives us direct distance. However, vision doesn't. However, for instance, if I ask you, what is the distance from here to here? Some of you may say uh, half a meter, some of you may say five centimeters and whatever, whatever. Because vision doesn't give us the exact distance. We guess. When someone asks you about where your house is, when you tell him just by vision and you say 200 meters from here, other cars, uh, your brother may come and say uh, 400 meters because vision doesn't give us the exact distance. Vision does not, doesn't give us the exact distance. Our remarkable ability to judge accurately how far objects are from us or each other is referred to us depth and distance person. We call this process depth and distance per perception. Our ability to measure distance is called depth and distance person. To perform this remarkable feat, we, re we rely in parts of part or binocular cues, cues that require the use of two eyes. Let's see, let's see on the next slide. When we measure distance, when we measure distance, what you can see from the figure, we use our two eyes or one eye, or separately. We can use two eyes at the same time or separately. Let's see, when we use two eyes, look, look at the first figure. Can you see the first figure? Look here, here, look here, the first A. When you look at A, look here. When you see this, the eyes are straight forward, looking straight forward. So what you can understand from here is the object is far away. The object is far away from us. The angle, look, the object is far away from us. When the object is far away from us, the angle will be straight between two eyes, like the first one, like here. However, look at this one, B, look at B, distance objects, look, look here, look at this flash, look at this flash disk. When it is closer, there is a muscle. Our eyes, we have a muscle, the muscles strain. The muscles strain when the object is coming closer. So that strain will take the distance to our brain. When it is closer, our uh, muscles strain very hard. Look, when it is far away, it will relax. Our eye muscles relax so that we can tell the distance. If it, if it strains, that means this flash disk is very close to me. If it's far away, our eyes will relax. Look, A, in case of A, in figure A, it's far away because the eyes are, the angle is very uh, straightforward, the angle is straightforward, sorry. So when we see B, uh, it's somewhat closer object. Look, look at this flash. When I see this flash, it's somewhat closer. And when, we see, when you see C, it's very close. Look, look. So that the angle, the straining angle between the eyes will tell the distance. Binocular cues, we call this process, the two eyes also receive, as the angle of convergence changes, the corresponding muscular change provides the brain with information. The angle, 
the brain, the muscular status will tell the brain that is about the distance. The two eyes also receive slightly different retinal images of the same object. Look, 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 look at my hand. When my hand is very far away from me, a bit far away from me, I can see similar things with my two eyes. However, when it is closer to my nose, this eye will see only this part, and this eye will see only this part. The diversity between figures from different eyes, two eyes, will tell the closeness or the farness of that object. If it is far away, I can see the entire hand with my two eyes, similar figure. However, if it is very much closer, closer to my nose, look, this eye will see only this part, and this eye will see only this part. You get me? So that the diversity between the two eyes, the message from the two eyes, when they are different, that means the object is closer to us. Slightly different in uh, cyber. Cell. Okay, this uh, this is this process is called retinal disparity. When the figure from two eyes is different, from the two eyes is different, it is called retinal disparity. Retinal disparity. Binocular cues help us to estimate distance up to 50 feet or 14.2 meters. Now here binocular cues in the low, we can, uh, we can be accurate, somewhat accurate up to 14.2 meter. By using our two eyes, by using the angle from the two eyes, we can be accurate up to 14.2 meters somewhat. If it's more than that, we cannot tell how far it is by using our the angle from our two eyes. By using by using A, B, C, the figures here. So we have to we use different different mechanisms. It is called monocular cues. Are cues about distance that are obtained from the image in either eye alone. For objects far away, we need only monocular cues. When the object is more than 14 point whatever meter far, more, uh, meter far away, we use one eye or two eyes alone separately, not the angle, not the angle between the two eyes, but the, the two eyes separately to tell how far that uh, away that object is. Some of these cues include linear perspective, is when two parallel lines appear to be coming together. For instance, let me give you, if you stand in the middle of a trainway, trainway, and if you look at it, if, let's say, if it's a straight line, and if you look at it, uh, the far away the distances, it will turn out that the two parallel lines converge. Look, let me give you, let me show you the figure. Look here, look here. Look here. If you stand here, oh. if you stand here in the train station, in the railway, and if you uh, see straight forward, the far away the distance is, the closer it comes, the two lines will start to converge, to connect each other. When we see it, we see it somewhat, they look like they're connected. So the closer they are, it's, it means that they're very far away from us. This is called linear perspective. Bilsano, is it clear? Bilsano? Okay, the other thing is interposition. Interposition, when we say interposition, say two of your friends are coming from uh, a certain distance, far away from you. When you look at them, uh, Mr. X is very close, I mean, uh, Mr. Y is behind and Mr. X is in front. 
So uh, that means Mr. X is closer to you. You see, we tell the distance. If someone is very much clear, when we look at them from a distance, if they are clear, we say that uh, Mr. X, the guy in front is uh, closer to us. This is interposition. However, Mr. Y, if Mr. Y comes at front, that means Mr. Y is closer to us. So interposition means uh, the position they are in. Area perspective, objects that are far away looks fuzzy and blurred in uh, comparison to near objects because, uh, okay, uh, area positioning, when we talk about area positioning, uh, take a car. When a car is very far, when a car is moving away from us, the far away the car traveled, the error perspective, it will not be clear. We cannot tell the color, we cannot take, uh, tell the texture, we cannot take the things in the car. So uh, the blend it is going to be the far away it is. መኪናው በራቀ ቁጥር ያ መኪና ከኛ በጣም ሩቅ ነው ብለርድ በሆነ ቁጥር ከኛ በጣም እየራቀኝ ሆነ ምን ያክል ይችላል this is error perspective light and shadow perspective when we talk about light and shadow perspective uh, when someone is when something is closer to us we can tell the light uh, we look at it as if it's bright uh, the brighter it is the closer it is if it's near to us it will be bright. But if it's far away from us, uh, I mean, the strength of the light won't be uh, that strong. The other thing is texture gradient. Uh, I've seen it. Uh, say this one. The far away we go, we cannot take the, 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 we cannot tell the texture of the, the wall. You may look at it and it will look smooth. However, when you get closer and see, there are some uh, fragments in the wall. So texture also tells us the distance. Okay, uh, is it clear? Is everything clear? Before we proceed, do you want me to explain? Is there uh, anything unclear? Is it clear? Is it clear? Tadu. Gilda. Okay. Wait, Okay, okay. She. Lela, anything? Anything unclear? Brook. Brook. Yes. Right. You take a tattoo. Can no Gilda no wins. Ah, Gilda no. Zare photo on Ah, who Okay. Okay, Ahun, we, we have seen uh, motion, movement, perception. Okay, now we see motion or movement perception. Okay, now we'll see motion and movement perception. Motion is bullet McFarlane. And then your motion, real motion, real movement, you know, with a you apparent movement. And then your motion, real movement, no? Let your movement in the vessel, get movement in the low part. Apparent movement. No? Real motion, 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 detect motion, real 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 if you are watching uh, ground tennis, ground tennis, Rafael Nadal, when Rafael Nadal is playing with somebody else, 
if you see the spectators, the guys who follow that match, when Rafael Nadal hits the ball, everyone, uh, I mean, their eyes are moving like this. An image moves across the retina or eye movement. This is called number two, eye movement. When the eye moves across the retina, it is called, uh, there is, we can tell that there is a movement. On the other case, when we see the first one, an image moves across the retina. For instance, when you are watching a movie, you not uh, rotate your eyes or you not move your eyes. You just sit like this and you just watch. The image rotates across your retina. You don't see, you don't move your eyes like uh, you're watching the game of Rafael Nadal or table tennis or whatever. So, uh, when we detect movement, we can detect the real movement, we can detect it in two ways. The first one is the image moves across our retina. The second one is the eye moves with the object. When the eye moves, our brain interprets that there is a movement. The other movement, the other movement is apparent movement. Apparent movement. This is, we perceive that if there is a movement, however, there is no movement. It sounds like. The first one, let's see an example. Stroboscopic motion. An illusion of movement created when two or more adjacent lights blink or on and off in a quick session. For instance, let's see Tom and Jerry now. Let's, for this example, let's mention Tom, Tom and Jerry. Do you think Tom is really running to catch uh, Jerry? Do you think so? You are watching Tom and Jerry movie, but do you think in the reality, Tom running to cut Jerry or Jerry running away from Tom? It's the best thing. Give me an answer. Please give me an answer. It sounds like Tom is chasing Jerry, isn't it? However, in reality, is Tom chasing Jerry? Tom is chasing Jerry? I had an illusion, uh, illusion of movement of Toronto. Exactly. This is called stroboscopic motion. Stroboscopic motion is it's when, when the colors are changing very fast, it sounds like uh, the, the thing or the object is moving. The object is moving, but it's not a real movement. It's an apparent movement. The other thing is autokinetic movement. Autokinetic. If, uh, if you share at the... Okay. The other th thing is this one. Look. Look here. Itaya chart, can you see the figure? Okay, look at the figure. Look at the figure. Uh, the, the closer you get and the more you look at it, it sounds as if the, uh, the circle is rotating. It looks like as if the circle is rotating. This is called autokinetic movement, autokinetic motion. If you stare at the light, at the light of, for a few seconds, it will appear to wander around randomly. We perceive it as if it's rotating. This is called autokinetic motion, induced motion. Okay, induced motion. When we talk about induced motion, uh, sometimes uh, last, uh, last night I was watching a TV, a movie, uh, not a movie actually, a song of uh, Yirdautena. Yirdautena was a famous musician. Uh, he, he's blind actually, but uh, he, he was in a car, in a clip. While uh, they do a clip, he was in a Mercedes. He's blind, normally he's blind, but the figure behind him was moving. And it sounds like uh, he was driving to the front side. This is called induced motion. Induced motion. Induced motion 
is one example of our current movement. Okay. Are you with me? I hope you are with me. Okay, now consistency. Okay, well, when things are closer to us, we can see everything. However, when they go far away from us, or when they move far away from us, uh, we will not be clear. We, we cannot clear everything. We cannot clearly see everything. So, however, our brain uh, keeps consistency. For instance, when a bus, when a boat, when a big ship is moving in a ship, in a, in a sea, when it's moving far away from us, it sounds as if it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. However, we perceive as if we perceive the shape. That uh, in our mind, we perceive the bigness of the, the ship. It's no matter how far away it is, no matter how small it looks, we know that it's big because we perceive the shape constantly. Cons there is a shape consistency. We know the shape is the shape of the ship. Merkabu menum kanya ruko bihed, tenish yemasaram bihed, yemerkabu kazu chinta lata chust in mezekaba. We memorize it. This is called shape consistency. The same way we uh, memorize size consistency, how big it is. No matter how far away and how small it looks, we uh, record the size, brightness consistency. The far away the objects are, the less brighter they will be. However, when we talk about those things, we know how brighter it is in our minds. Location consistency in the same way. Location consistency. Color consistency, the same thing. In the Zimna Garage, we, uh, our brain uh, perceives them or memorizes them as they are, no matter how far they are, how dim they are, how whatever they are, uh, we'll perceive them, the real them. And the last topic, the last uh, slide of today's class is, uh, today's class is uh, extrasensory perception. Some people have extra capacity, extra capacity. To, memory, to see things, to hear things, to perceive things. And then so which can normal so yet a year, perceive your mother, give a message of Aki Chuota Rachu. Let me start the first one, telepathy. Involving, uh, involving mind to mind communication without actual sensory. Let me give you one example. To check this, they put two people in two different rooms, which is which were far away, and they give them a card to play. Carta, which I want to carta, a card to play. They give them, and they ask him, uh, one fellow to randomly to take out one card from the entire cards. He took out that card, and the, the guy with a telepathy far away, who is far away from that fellow took out similar card, took out similar card. This is called telepathy, involving mind-to-mind -mind communication without actual sensory perception, sensation. This is called telepathy. The other one is clarivoice, is the perception of an event or fact without normal sensory input. For example, sensing that your friend's house is burning. Some people have the capacity, clarivoyance capacity. Clarivoyance means uh, without looking at it, without whatever, they can see it. They can sit here and they will tell you that there is an accident happening around Mescal Square. These kind of people are called clarivoyance. This is clarivoyance. Precognition means precognition involving perceiving future events. Some people have the capacity to tell, they will see you and they will tell you that you're going to be a president, like Dr. Abiy Ahmed. His mother told him that he's going to be a president. She saw it, she feel it. This is called 
precognition. Precognition. They can see it before something happens. Some people will see it when something bad is going to happen in the future. So they'll tell you to take care and whatever. So this capacity is called precognition. The last one is psychonesis. Is the ability to affect physical world purely through thoughts. We call it this evil eye mandalomatum. Banya evil eye. We call it evil eye. See it at Buddha and Mandalomatum. And then so we, some people have the capacity to burn things, to hurt people. Just they will see you and you'll feel sick. For this, you can go to different monasteries, different churches that uh, uh, that the people are trying to get rid of this kind of uh, bad uh, whatever. So uh, the westerns for this uh, problem, the westerns usually will give you a, uh, a shade, a sunglass, which reduces the power of your eyes. And the, uh, which our post psychosis like and the uh, Buddha Manam power they will give them a sunglass, a black sunglass, which will reduce the power of this uh, these things, their eyes. So uh, finally, what we're going to say here is that uh, psychology accepts that there are people with this capacity, with telepathy, clairvoyance, precognition, and psychosis. There are there are people. However, we don't have an explanation, a deep explanation to tell why it's happening, how can we resolve it, uh, if it's a problem, for instance, if it's a, an evil eye, it will cause a big problem even to the person himself with the power. So they don't have, they cannot tell you how to get rid of it or whatever, but there are people with this capacity. Okay, thank you. But this will come to the last uh, part. Okay, if you have any question, please. Do you have any question? Leyunet Mefter, Alama Chino, Alama Kefto Dadari Mora Lebachu, the National Airways at Kubania, National Aviation College. Tratna Derejon yet a Beka Sultana Bemestet, Bukuzega Yafarano, Buffalite Operation, Bever Ramas Tangudo, Beticating Na Reservation, Botil Na Tourism Welch Asseltan and Toda in Nadrutalan, College Achen, Canada Camigeno, International Air Transport Association, Ayatana, Kangalizu, ICM Gar Bemetababer, Alama Kafukna Lo Sultana Yesate Genya. Buffalo operation. Bever Ramas Tangudo, Yemen Satacho Sultana, Ethiopia Civil Aviation Bala Sultan, Muluk Nan. Adrasha, Kergola Gul Tower, Hyoleta Dababai, Wadashola Bemus Domangarai, Ye National Airways at Kubania, National Aviation College, Hilmon.